Hi, I'm Drew, and this is a little more detailed tutorial for Casimir Pulaski Day by Sufjan Stevens. The song is in standard tuning, E, A, D, G, B, E. If you're going to play along with the album version, you're going to want to capo it on the first fret, because that's the way it is in the album version. I saw him do it live, capo it on the third fret, and it made it closer to my vocal range, so that's the way I've played it ever since. Uh, it also makes it a little easier for me to get everything into the camera, so it works out well in this case. So I'm capoed on the third fret, but everything's the same. You can just pick what fret makes it the best for your singing range if you're going to sing along with it, and go to town. There are four chords throughout this entire song, and they are played in the same order throughout the entire song. If you just wanted to play the chords with it, it's very simple. The first chord is a D, the second chord is a C, the third chord is an A minor. The fourth chord is a G. These are all common power chords, probably the first four that many people learn when they're learning to play guitar. So if you just wanted to play the chords, it would be like this. And that would be the whole song. It repeats just like that over and over again until the end. There's no part in the middle where it changes or anything like that. It's actually a quite simple song if you're just playing chords. There are two things that get added to it that make it the song you hear when he plays it. The first is transitions between the chords. And the harder part, for most people, is the hammer-ons right after the transitions. So we'll do the next easiest first, the transitions between the chords. If you just play the chords, it sounds kind of empty, especially compared to uh, the way you hear it on the album, because it's just a bunch of strumming. When he does it, it sounds like this. So just the plucked part, without any chords in between it, is like this. You have the D shape down, and you pluck the D string, and then you would strum the D chord. Then the transition is an open A string to a third fret on the A string, which is what would happen when you put down the C shape, like this. The transition from C to A minor goes on the same a string, it's going to go from 3 to 2 to open, and then you'll be in the A minor shape if you do it like I did with my hand there. And then there isn't a transition to the G, but he does pluck the E string in the G shape before he strums. So all of the plucking without any chords is like this. So what you want to do is add those pluck strings to the rest of the strumming and it sounds like this For uh, newer players, it'll take a little practice to do, but it's something that is played in many, many songs, especially if you like this sort of style of music. It's a real common thing. Uh, they'll pluck one string or do some plucking transition, and then the rest is just chord strumming, and it, it's a nice thing to learn. There are a lot of songs that use it, and it'll really make the song sound fuller and make it sound a lot more true to the way you'll hear it recorded a lot of the time. So getting that part down is you're two-thirds of the way there. You have the chords, you have the transitions. 
the harder part for most beginners to learn, the hardest part for this song, is going to be the hammer-ons that happen after the transitions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the transitions, and then I'm going to play the hammer-ons with them, but with no chords. So the transitions, like we already learned, the D, nothing special again, just the first one plucked. When you go to the C, you do the transition, and then you're going to do a hammer-on with the D string. You're going to pick up this finger from the C shape, play the D string. Sorry, hit the wrong string there. It's the D string, third string. So it's D. Then from the C to the A minor, you're going to do the transition. And then it is exactly the same hammer on. You pick up your middle finger again off that third string, you play the third string, and then you hammer on to the second fret. So the first two hammer ons are identical. You're just having a different chord shape held down when you do them. So you have the D. go to the G, pluck the E string, and then the hammer-on is going to be here on the A string. So I'll try to make it so it's a little easier to see, but you're going to get to the G and you're going to play. That's all of the hammer-ons. That's pretty much the rest of the song. So. The transitions and the hammer-ons without any chords sounds like this. Now the way he does it to make it sound the way you hear it when you listen to the way he plays it, which he plays it pretty much identically live as he does on the recording, which is much to his credit, uh, he won't pluck the hammer-on strings. He will pluck the transitions, but the hammer-ons you hear while he's strumming the chord. It's like this. So the transitions get plucked, and then you just go on with strumming, and you have to hammer it on pretty hard so you can hear the hammer on through the chord. You want to try not to hit every string on every chord because it's going to make the sound so full that the hammer on will get drowned. So you kind of want to put emphasis on the string that will be used for the hammer on, which is third string for the first two and the first string for the rest. That's just something that takes some practice. It's um, another, once again, good thing to learn because it's something you'll probably use in many songs if you like this style of music. But it does take a little practice to be able to get the emphasis on the string you want when you're just strumming a chord. So if you get all that down, then it'll sound something like this.
shoulder plate I could see what you were reading All the glory that the Lord has made And the complications you could do without When I kissed you on the I won't torture you with me singing the rest of the song. As you saw, when I start singing, uh, a little bit of my concentration goes away from the transitions, the hammer-ons. Sometimes I just omit them. It still sounds okay. I mean, you still get them in there a few times, and it's another thing that takes a lot of practice. I'm not the most coordinated musician in the world, so when I'm doing one thing, I can do one thing fairly well. When I start trying to sing with it, uh, a lot of the detail goes out the window, but there's a song, do with it what you will, play it better than me, and enjoy. Mm -hmm.